I have with me two members of the Triple O UI team. And if you would uh, introduce yourselves, tell us uh, what organization you work with, and, and maybe maybe a high level overview of what Triple O is for those that are not familiar with it. I'll let Erica do the, the overview, but I'm Jason Rist, I'm um, with Red Hat, and I, uh, I work on the Triple O UI primarily. I'm a team catalyst for internally for the team and help organize all our tasks and stuff and uh, develop some of the stuff for the UI. Yeah, uh, hey, I'm Yirka Domashek. Uh, I also work in Red Hat and I'm, I'm technically leading the Triplo UI team. Um, okay, so in, to introduce the Triplo and Triplo UI, uh, Triplo is a tool to uh, which deploys the OpenStack. Uh, it's special in a way where, where we are basically using uh, OpenStack's own facilities uh, to deploy the OpenStack. That's why the name Triplo, because it's an OpenStack and OpenStack, basically. Um, yeah, the Triplo UI uh, is kind of special in a, uh, in a sense that uh, it's pure client-side JavaScript application, written, which is running in the browser, and it's directly communicating to uh, the OpenStack APIs and to blow API. So let's start with what is past. Tell us what uh, you accomplished in the Pike cycle, and you know, in particular, things that that uh, users are going to notice is is new and improved. Uh, so one of the biggest things that we did for the the Pike cycle was uh, this pretty comprehensive effort by a bunch of people for doing logging. And what that means is that all the actions in the UI and the things that they do for things underneath are now logged in such a way that you can uh, figure out without even looking at the UI, in a sense, what you were doing in the UI. And the big thing that makes that useful and helpful is that um, if the customer has trouble with the UI and they aren't in the know of exactly how to use the UI, they might not know to open certain consoles or whatever and pull down the errors and then send those to technical support. So there's a tool, it's called SOS Report, where you can pull down all the logging information and it's it'll pretty comprehensively give you a set of things that you can, you can hand off in a bug report or to a technical support person and they can look pretty, pretty easily at what went on in the UI and try to get to a solution fix fix your problems in the UI and your deployment. Um, uh, another, another section where we spent some time in, in, in Pipe was uh, basically uh, uh, the part of the application which handles the node, uh, bare metal node management, uh, which means that we are configuring the nodes for, for, the, for the deployment and preparing them. So, so we've basically completely overhauled uh, this part of the application We've improved uh, improved the way we are presenting the data for the users. So uh, they, at first glance, they can see what the state of the node is right now and what steps are need, needed uh, to be done. We've also uh, completed all the all the actions which are necessary to prepare the node uh, for the deployment. Uh, also, another another part. Uh, where we did some uh, important changes were the plans management. So uh, a deployment plan is still like a top level entity uh, which holds all the configuration for the deployment. And uh, we've, um, we made sure that it's really easy to export and import the plan at any point of time. So uh, with this, you can actually go ahead and Deploy your deployment and then export the plan which has which been which has been used uh, to deploy the uh, the deployment, and you can replicate it at a, at some other site if you want. That's that's probably export and import. Yeah. So this week you've been discussing plans for the coming cycle. What have you come up with? Uh, tons of stuff, but one of the biggest things is to uh, come to feature parity with the CLI. So there's been 
over time there's been changes added to the CLI that were not included in the UI and vice versa. And so one of the biggest discussions that was actually really awesome to have where we got a whole triple O team that was here uh, in agreement that we need to have sort of a layer above that we can talk to that both the CLI and the UI can talk to and make it so that there's there's never a ch chance for the CLI to be doing something that the UI can't also do. Yeah, this is, this is basically the effort which we started two years ago when we introduced the UI. So that's where we decided that we, we need to move the business logic, which was in triple client, uh, that we need to be able to provide it in a, in a common library uh, by a common API so that any client which wants to consume Triple O has the same feature feature set. So, so this is basically the final step to get there. And uh, it, it, it basically ensures that any point of time you can, you can uh, start using, uh, start creating or configuring your deployment using the CLI. At any point of time you can switch to the UI, do some work there at, on the same plan and finish with the CLI again if you want. So, so basically those two clients are perfectly compatible and we, we ensure that any, we don't dupli duplicate the logic uh, somewhere else, it's central place. And yeah, so that's, that's, that's the final step we need to make, which, which is basically identifying uh, our work for, for queens. Yeah, and then besides all that, <laughs> there's a, also an effort to uh, make the whole undercloud containerized. So it's hopefully a small effort, but to bring the Triple O UI into its own container. Yeah, um, maybe the final final thing which we which we uh, are kind of lacking in the UI is uh, is the network configuration, uh, which is like the last missing step, which we which we which involves right. some some uh, like a local files changes to do properly. So this is something we would like to focus on if there's a spare time. To Make it a visual effort instead of a yep. checking it out by hand effort. If I want to know more about Triple O, where do I look? Uh, so there's tripleo.org for all the Triple O stuff. And then Triple O UI, we've got a pretty comprehensive set of docs that are on our GitHub or on our Git repo. So um, that's on GitHub and it's on stream uh, OpenStack. So you can go, what is it? OpenStack slash. Triple O dash UI. Uh, I think so. Yeah. Um, we've probably uh, forgot about one thing. Um, uh, basically, part of the effort of uh, feature parity for CLI and UI is uh, okay. being able to define and, and is, is defining and documenting what does it actually mean uh, to complete a feature for Triple O. So, whenever any new contributor comes to Triple O, which is happening quite often because they we, we basically want to um, support deployment of all the projects. So, or, or services. So, uh, we want to put effort into documenting uh, how a feature should be implemented so it's available to all the clients, not just through the CLI, which is kind of happening right now, probably because of the lack of that documentation. So, so we've got yeah, we've got plans to do a new developer onboarding documentation set. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you very much for your time. And uh, good luck in the coming cycle. Thank you. Thank you.